Welcome to episode number one of the Mastering Marriage podcast, where our goal is to strengthen, unite, and restore your marriage. My name is Amanda Taylor, and my husband David and I are the co-founders of MendOurMarriage.com. And our goal is to break the back of divorce by bringing married couples together to be accountable, keep the passion alive, and expose the hidden issues that try to rip marriages apart. All right, so we're about to get started. David, you want to say hi? I sure do. Welcome, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the very, very, very first podcast of Mastering Marriage. Yes. And this is huge, right? Because most of you guys didn't know, but we had a podcast with Single But Ready, which is for singles, but now we're focusing on marriage. Right. Well, marriage or marriages? Marriages. Marriages. Okay. <laughs> but before we get started, well, let me tell you a little bit about the show and what to expect from us. Um, and then we're going to dive right in because this show is not going to be any more than, what, 15 minutes, if right. that. We're, we want these shows to be very brief because we're providing one show per day. Five days a week. That's yes. right. Yeah, five days a week. So we're going to be in your ear a lot, but we're going to be providing a lot of valuable content. So check this out, guys. With this podcast, the main focus is on you, the listener. Okay? And primarily, what I'll say is this. You guys are going to be submitting questions, if you haven't already, via either SpeakPipe, which is a, a voicemail, or submitting them through email or Facebook. And we've gotten a lot of questions since we've already launched, you know, the portion of the site and what we're going to be doing is taking one question per show and answering it so maybe your question will be asked maybe it won't it just depends Um, but we have a lot to get to so we'll make sure to try to get to your question as much as quickly as possible now we're going to keep them anonymous so don't worry when we play your voicemail or when we read your message we're not going to say your name and we're going to try to keep out as many identifiable variables as possible so that you know, you guys don't get all, you know, in trouble or whatever for asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it can be. Um, but the main part, like I said, is that we're gonna we're out to literally break the back of divorce. That's right. And that's the major concept of Mend Our Marriage. If you haven't been to our site, if you haven't subscribed, and literally we have thousands and thousands of subscribers. So, yes. I mean, this is a movement that we've started and, and it's not going to stop. It's going to snowball. But the main part is we're out to break the back of divorce. And Mend Our Marriage is our gift to you. Because, Mandy, you could talk about this a little bit more, but our marriage wasn't all roses and peaches and cream, right? You know, we Mm -hmm. we literally had to die, you know, to grow together. That's Um, right. That's right. And now, we won't be telling all of our story on this podcast because we have another podcast, which is the longer format for our members, So for those members who are actually members of the site, not subscribers, but members of the site, you get the real deal, the the longer version with us coaching and counseling and mentoring. You get all that in the other podcast. All the juicy. All the juicy, yeah. But this one, we'll give you some juice. We'll give you some juicy details, but it's going to be brief juice, okay? Does that That, sound weird? That sounds weird. Okay, I know. That's a little. But anyway, we're going to get to our first question. So I'm going to play the question, and then we'll be back with the answer. What do you do when your husband is no longer interested in having sex as much as you are? All right, guys. So hopefully you heard that question. Um, and it was a pretty interesting question. Uh, so we're Mandy and I, we're going to take some time to answer that question now. And so briefly, the main concept of the question was, what do you do when your husband is no longer interested in having sex as much as you are? Hmm. What do you think about that, babe? <laughs> well, you know what? A lot of things happen, of course, when you are married. There's a lot of situations where, you know, you're going to have some miscommunication and maybe one spouse may not be as satisfied as the other one. But there are certain things that you need to um so certain things that you need to do in order to, you know, figure out what's going on. Yeah, and, and what we'll do is we'll give you three, whoever sent this question in, we we really appreciate it. Actually, I know your name, so, um, but <laughs> we're not going to say it on there. But we're going to give you three bullet points, and then we're going to expound on those bullet points, and then hopefully give you something tangible that you can walk away with. That's right. Um, and, and I've learned this ever since high school, that the teacher always say, 
if you're the one asking questions, there's probably 10 other people who have the same question. Exactly. So we're going to provide information to you, but we're also going to be providing it to other people who are experiencing this same type of situation. Exactly. Um, and so so let, we, let's talk about three points real fast because I want to be brief. Um, point number one is you have to assess yourself first. Then you have to communicate the right way to him, and then you have to execute. So, right. Mandy, when we talk about assessing yourself, what, what, what are we talking about when we say that? Well, assessing yourself, whether it's the husband or the wife, mm-hmm. um, when you assess yourself, you have to step back and you have to see, okay, what are some things that I stopped doing that I used to do when we were first courting or yeah. when we first started dating? Okay. So did I always have, you know, smell goods on? And now and... your breath stank, you know, like, seriously, <laughs> I'm saying, like, but you got you to gotta be honest. Right. Most people struggle to look at themselves in the mirror and be objective. Exactly. And what Mandy is saying is, okay, when we dated, when we were dating, was I doing certain things that now that we're married and I got you, I ain't doing no more? Exactly. Did I come fresh and clean? And all of a sudden, now that we're married, we've been married for a couple of years, I ain't keeping my hair done, I ain't wearing no deodorant, I ain't shaving my legs. Right. I mean, seriously, you know, and, and you know, am I keeping myself put together so that this person is still attracted to me? Exactly. Right. Is, exactly. that, is, is there anything else that you want to add to that point? Because I think that's a very important point that you want to really make sure that you assess yourself first. Yes, definitely. I mean, you have to do a full assessment of yourself yeah. and just from the way you communicate with them yeah. and the way you encourage them and talk to them all the way to, like David was mentioning, you know, did you used to, you know, wear, <laughs> you know, matching underwear and drawers all and the now time? Now all of a sudden they hoes and no, 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 oh, I, David. no, 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 not there. I think he meant their hoes that, in the drawers. That your drawers not, are holy I didn't, now. Yeah. I, <laughs> Jesus forgive me. Cause I didn't, I know not what I do. I didn't cuss and I didn't mean to cuss at you. Cause that was, that was just wrong. <laughs> but the, okay. The, the main point though, is that you really, like Mandy said, assess yourself Yes. before you go and say, why are you not ask yourself, is there anything that I am not right before you go and ask, but after you assess yourself, the next step is communicate, right? Communicate exactly. with your spouse, communicate with them, but communicate the right way. Exactly. You no. Know? And here's what I do. Cause you know, I, most people know that I'm a mental health counselor and here's what I recommend is when you communicate to them, don't go and say, why come you ain't, you know, uh, wow. <laughs> why come you ain't, you like that one? That, that you know? was interesting. Well, how come you ain't doing X, Y, Z, or why did you stop? Don't do those because automatically, if especially for men, will become defensive. Exactly. And you don't want your husband to co- become defensive if you're trying to help him in a certain area. Right. And so the main reason why we asked you to assess yourself first was so, so that you can go to him and say, you know what, husband, or you know what, honey, or babe, what do you call me, pump? Pumpkin. 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 Okay. You know what, Pump? Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm embarrassed. But you know what, Pump? I used to do these things when we first met, but now I've stopped. And I'm wondering if that's the reason why you have not been as attracted to me as you used to be. Right. Right? You see what I just did? Uh, you took the pressure off of him and you put it on your shoulders. Right. And you, you own some of the responsibility. And that's important. That's key. Most people miss it. Right. So right. after you communicate that, after you discuss it with them, the last step is what, baby? The last step is to execute. Execute. Put into action what you guys discussed. Exactly. And when we say execute, we are meaning you give. Exactly. Right? Because most people think that marriage is 50-50. And I have to crush a lot of people's bubbles when, when I say actually marriage is a 100-0. It's not 50-50, it's 100-0. Yes. Because the main concept, if you don't know this by now, the main concept of love, the basic definition of love is to give. Yes. And within the confines of a marriage, you have to focus on giving a hundred percent without expecting anything in return. Exactly. Okay. That's agape. It's unconditional. No conditions on your love. Right. And I know I fell short of this when I married my wife. I didn't have the proper concept of love and I could not execute it right. Um, and that's because... We were two different people coming from two different upbringings, and we both right. needed to learn how to love. Exactly. Right? So what do you think about that, babe? Yeah, and you know what? I know that some people are probably about to turn the podcast off. Don't turn it off. Because they don't agree. And yes, it does take two. And yes, it, it would it will work really, really well if you have two people who are giving that 100%. But the, mm-hmm. truth, the, the truth of the matter is when you are in a marriage, 
most times you're not going to have both people who are able to give that 100 at the same time. Yeah. So you have to be able to stand on your own two feet and be able to love that person through whatever they're going through yeah. and see them for who they are and see and see your marriage for what it's supposed to be yeah. past the season that you're in. And that is so, so crucial. It's crucial and it can be very hard. It's, it's not yeah. easy. Because Mandy... You did it right when we were on the bring of divorce. That was something that I experienced. <laughs> yeah, when I was when I was talking about not wanting to. When, when, let me be blunt. When I when I told my wife I didn't love her, exactly, she still stuck in there, and it was her loyalty that inspired me to change and to grow. Um, right, and, and I mean, yeah. you know, maybe people from the outside looking in may say, okay, well. I, you know, I was stupid for staying and and him saying those things, and I deserve this and I deserve that, but. Again, it's about better or worse. Yeah. When you you say those vows. Yes. And even though David said that he felt like he wasn't in love with me anymore, it was a part of him that still wanted to stay. There was nothing else he could offer me Mm -hmm. but to say, I'm here, but I don't necessarily want to be here. Yeah. And so I had to take that to God in prayer. And she took it and ran with it. And sometimes it was minute by minute, hour by hour. Day by day. Yes. (laughs) And so, but, you know, I, I it, there were key things that I had to make sure that I had in place to keep me going. Yeah, and, and, and those are things that we're going to talk about in more detail in the other podcast, the one for our members. Yeah. Um, not to say we're withholding things, but we want to keep these episodes short. So, to recap, what were the three steps again, baby? The three steps were to assess, mm-hmm. communicate, and execute. And execute, yes, yes. So... Let me know how that goes. Um, if you remember asking this question, uh, send us an email, you know, or another voicemail with, you know, some updates about how things are going. Exactly. And we'll make sure that we keep our ears and our eyes open for you. You know, if we come across other resources and tools, we'll make sure to have those available on the website. Speaking of the website, as we wrap this podcast up, we are almost there. The almost. launch date is September the 5th. 2014. Yes. I'm so excited. It's a Friday, and we have literally one week to go. I'm hyped. I'm tired. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready for this to, to start. Um, and, and, and here's how you can help us is pass this podcast along to someone else who needs it. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, like our page. You know, send us a question. And subscribe to the podcast. Yes. Uh, you can actually go to iTunes to subscribe to the podcast. And while you're there... Leave us a review and a rating, an honest rating. Right. And we love to hear reviews. And here's the reason why the reviews are so important. Not because we want to, you know, get big heads and, you know, be like, oh, they like us, <laughs> you know. Uh, but really, it's all about exposure. And the more people we have reviewing and submitting those reviews, the more eyes will be on our podcast. The more right. eyes that's on our podcast, the more we can save marriages or the right. more marriages we can save. The more we can break the The back of divorce. Break the back of divorce. So, guys, we love you. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And thank you. But we out, y'all. Deuces. Deuces.